I've been making games for probably too long already if you look at my IPEX, but I still want to talk a bit to you because maybe you're considering getting started with making games. Maybe it's something that you've been wanting to do your entire life, maybe it's your 2025 New Year's resolution. I don't care, but I do want to give you some tips about how has game dev changed a little bit over the past few years while I've been in it, and how do you like not make the same dumb mistakes that we have. So I have five big things that I want you to keep in mind when starting with game development, and the first one is that engines can have specialties. So for example, if you want to make something like an FPS, Unreal is a really good engine for that. Or if you want to make a 2D game, hey, Game Maker Studio is really good for that. But despite those specialties, honestly, I don't think you should be worrying too much about what exact engine you're going to be using. You can use Godot, you can use Unity, you can use Unreal if you know that you're gonna make a 2D game. Use Game Maker Studio for all I care. All of these engines support basically all of the genres. The only thing that really changes between these engines is the way they do things. And yeah, sure, some may be more optimized towards certain kinds of genres, but honestly, you're not going to be skilled enough yet to really run into those roadblocks that are like certain engine specific issues once you go really deep. So go for an engine. I don't care. Do you want to use Godot, which is objectively the wrong choice? I don't mind, go for that. Do you want to use Unity because you love being rock pulled? Can go for that as well. Do you hate performance and you love loading screens? Go for Unreal. All engines have their own problems, all engines have their own strengths, and there is no perfect engine, so don't overcomplicate it. Pick whatever one you want and get started with working on your game, and you'll very quickly realize as well of like, hey, actually the way that Unreal works with blueprints, I don't like it, or the way that Unity allows me basically too much freedom and I can do too many things, which means that I have kind of don't have any direction on what to do exactly is kind of becoming an issue for me. Those are things that you can only tell once you've started making games. It's not something that you can talk about right now and be like, oh no, I couldn't use Godot for my future project because of these reasons. And that leads me into the second point where, you know, people overcomplicate their engine, but the big thing they don't understand yet, and this is why I tell you, go and do that engine, is because you'll very quickly realize, hey, actually, game development is kind of fucking hard. It's like, oh, I need to do the code. Sure, maybe I can do that. Oh, I need to do the art. Uh, maybe a bit harder, maybe you've never 3D modeled in your life, but you're still optimistic. But then you get into things like game design. What on earth is good game design? It's probably something that you have no idea about yet right now. And those are all things that you need to learn and you will very quickly learn how inadequate you are at that. And that's okay. Also things like marketing, making your game feel good and all of that really, it takes time to develop. I think don't kid yourself there, it's going to be hard. And that is something that you don't really understand, but there is more to game development than just developing. And that is, I think, a big trap that a lot of people fall into, just thinking that, hey, I just program, I have this good game idea in my brain, but the moment you want to turn it into an engine, hey, maybe actually programming a certain mechanic isn't as easy as you had thought it was going to be in your head. And it's like, oh my God, why is it so hard to make that MMORPG? Like, maybe now you understand why there aren't that many good ones of them. It is going to be very much a learning experience. And I think, I've said this before, you overestimate how much you can do in a short period of time. So probably you're not going to be making your first magnum opus in the first three months after opening an engine for the first time, but you underestimate what you can do if you just keep going at it for like one, two, three years and make sure, maybe you'll get some eye bags like this, but you will steadily improve as long as you keep working on it. And then another thing that honestly, I see a lot of people get into game development and it's kind of a, it's not their fault entirely, but it's something that they are not fully aware of. And that is that the way that people are making games and that you're marketing games and all of that, it has changed a lot. And the main difference here is, okay, up until 2017, basically, anything you put onto Steam was gonna be a success, guaranteed, basically. And then it was like a few years where I was like, okay, and then during COVID it shot up again with like, hey, a lot more games are being successful, but right now it's not like a crisis and a bubble has burst and whatever, but it's definitely not easy to stand out. And there used to be a time where, hey, make good game and the good game will sell itself. I think right now, it's not really a thing. What is a thing? Make great game or make excellent game even, and those can probably sell themselves. The problem is realistically, you are not an excellent game designer. You are not an actual excellent game developer. And at that point, you can make a good game, but a good game will need support from things like actual marketing campaigns and actually trying to make a game that the market wants, doing market research and all these things. And I know those are scary terms maybe, but I think definitely you shouldn't go into this and just be like, oh, I'm gonna make the game that I wanna make and then I hope it gets successful. Or like you assume that it's going to be a good game, but it's not actually. I think that is a big problem as well. A lot of game developers, including us, 
honestly, are kind of delusional. You have to be delusional if you want to get started with game development, I think. But that means that you are not being honest with yourself when you look at your own game and it's like, oh yeah, this is a good game. But it's like, realistically, it's a 6 out of 10 game or whatever. And maybe some people would enjoy it, but it's not going to be good enough to get that organic viral marketing where people will start talking about it. And I think that is the big problem here. So it has become more important than ever to actually look at okay, how do I make a game that people are actually interested in? I made a video about like saturated genres and things like that and how much you should care about it over there last week. I think you can check out that one if you are interested in that. And I talk a bit more about the entire thing there of, hey, well, how do you find the games that you should be making and that people are interested in? By all means, you can still make games that you want yourself as well, but don't assume that if you make a good 2D platformer, it is going to sell itself. I have to be honest with you, that's not going to happen. And then something else that is probably not going to happen is that publishers are going to put hundreds of thousands of dollars in your game after you show your cool snazzy prototype to them. This is once again, there used to be a time where this was definitely the case. You got your demo, you got your vertical slice, or sometimes even you only had a pitch deck and you could get money for making your game. Maybe you could hire extra artists for it or you could just pay yourself a living wage. I think the first games that you're making right now, you need to assume that you're going to have to fund them all by yourself. Of course, you have things like government grants, some places as well that can help, but I would go into this assuming that, hey, I will probably have to bear pretty much all of the cost. But the good news at least is that it's gotten pretty cheap to make games. We're looking at an average, if you want to do a full on Steam release and you want to use some assets and things like that, most games when I ask our audience are between like 300 and maybe 800 to a thousand dollars that they spend on making their game, which isn't crazy high. Of course, we're not factoring in time here, but definitely publishing is not the way to go anymore. Publishers are not really taking on a lot of new projects. A lot of publishers are actually also shutting down because all of them took bad decisions when we were in the peak of gaming back in 2020, 2021, that is now coming back to bite them in the ass. So the current gaming landscape and game development like ecosystem has changed a lot and you're going to have to focus a lot more on funding all of it by yourself or working on shoestring budgets at least for your first games. And this is where the final tip comes in. It's something that we've been experimenting with a lot as well. It's something that more and more YouTubers have been talking as well. Because you have to fund these games by yourself most likely, you can't do the seven year long development cycles anymore where you're going to be making an RPG as your first game and it's going to be your magnum opus like I said. But instead, there's more and more a shift now to making smaller scoped games, developing more iteratively on like, okay, what is one good mechanic that we can think about? And then how do we make a game that's like a, an experience of like four to six hours, maybe tops, about that one mechanic and we put that on Steam, we maybe price it at the most at like $10 and you move much faster, you build up a backlog of games that you have released and then you get that passive income dream of, hey, you've released three games in the past year you're not really spending a lot of time anymore on those games, like making updates and whatever, but they're still getting sales. You're still doing your discounting and all of that. And those things can stack up and become, like I said, that passive income whilst you work on your bigger project. And you kind of scale up with that safety net of previous game release earnings all combined. The more games that you've brought out at the end of the day, the more kinds of revenue you can make. And sure, some of these games, they'll make like 20 bucks a month. That's not gonna be great. But other games maybe are like 500 bucks a month. And it's much better then to have a few of those games because that is another important thing maybe that kind of is linked to this. The amount of time that you spend working on a game does not correlate to how much money do people want to give you for that game or how much money is your game going to make them. There's no guarantees for that. It's not where you can tell people on Steam like, oh yeah, I spent three years developing this game, hence you need to give me $20 versus, oh, I only spent a month on this. Now you need to give me $10 or whatever. Players care about the experience. They do not care about how long you have been taking to make that game. So it's better, I think, in that way to focus on making smaller-ish games. Don't go past half a year, especially if it's your first games. I wouldn't even go past three months just to feel like I said, hey, what are some good engines and all of that and figure out what is the kind of games that I like to make, what is the style that I want to make and go from there basically. And then the other advantage of these smaller scoped games is that you learn more as well. Like of course, like I said, developing is a thing, but you also get to go through that full loop of, okay, I want to try and market my game. I want to try and actually do the release, maybe do a post-launch update. I want to get some of these other beats, for example, working with present, whatever. There are things that, sure, you can watch videos on our channel. We've made videos about all of those things as well, but you will never learn as much from watching our videos versus 
actually going and making those mistakes as well. And sure, some mistakes you can avoid, but honestly, you will still make a bunch of mistakes. Like for example, launching your game in the middle of a Steam sale. And it's like, yeah, nobody will care about your game then because you get no visibility. And it's like, okay, I could have learned about this, but this is something that you now have learned for yourself. And those are the things that you learn from the most. You can learn from our mistakes, like I said, but you messing up yourself and learning the hard way is still going to be better. And once again, those first few games, if you were spending seven years, for example, on working that first game, and then you do some dumb mistake and all of it is in the garbage, you're going to be ruined or like mentally ruined at least. Versus if, if you spend a few months on it, it's your first game, you're probably going to be much more capable of just being like, okay, this was my fault, but like still try to shrug it off and keep going basically. I hope this already gave you a quick primer. There's a bunch of other content on our channel where two times every week we make a video where we talk about the things that we have learned making our own games and yeah, basically sharing our mistakes with you so you can hopefully avoid making them as well. That's all I had to say. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.